Uh, now I'm going to show you how to find the center of mass of an object that has a hole in it. We can call that a cavity. Okay. So imagine you have a disc like this, perfectly circular disc. Let's say the radius is 4 meters. So the radius is 4 meters. Let's say the mass is 10 kilograms. It really doesn't matter. But for the sake of, uh, for the sake of uh, manipulating it, we'll give it a certain mass. Now let's say it has a cavity of radius 1 meter located uh, whose center is here. One meter this way, one meter this way. So the cavity is like this. So it starts out one meter to the right, another one meter, another one meter, another one meter. So the whole radius would be four meters. So other than that, the rest of the disc is solid. Where would the center of mass of this object be? Well, from logic, if you think about it, The center of mass of this should be about where? Because there's a hole here, more of the mass will be over there, right? So it will be somewhere about here. It will shift this way. So how do we do that? Well, here's what we do. By the way, the 10 kilogram mass, when we say it has a 10 kilogram mass, that means it's the mass of this material, okay? And without the hole. So the 10 kilogram doesn't include the hole, right? So it's the mass of the actual object. So here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to say this. This is equal to the whole solid disk. What would the center of mass of the whole solid disk be? Well, right at the center, right? Right at the center. And what would the mass of the solid disk be? Well, we don't know. It's going to be a little bit more than 10 kilogram, right? But we're going to have to calculate that. So what is its mass? We can call that M1. And its center of mass will be at the center, so X1 is going to be zero, right? From that, we're going to subtract the center of mass of the cavity, and we're going to treat that as a missing mass. So minus the cavity. The cavity will have a certain mass M2, which we have to calculate. And then its center of mass will be at its center, right here x2. Now what is x2 equal to? Well, if it's positioned right there, it's equal to 2 meters, right? 1 meter and 1 meter. It's 2 meters from the center of the, um, the big disk, right? So we can say x2 is equal to 2 meters. So let's first calculate the mass of what the total solid would be. We can say m1 divided by 10 kilogram is equal to the surface area of this pi times 4 squared, right, because the radius is 4 meters, divided by what's the surface area of the actual object, pi times 4 squared minus pi times what? 1 squared, right? Because the, the radius there is 1. So what is that? Pi, pi, pi cancel. 16 over, 16 minus 1, 15, okay? So M1 will be what? 16 over 15 times 10. <coughs> Six repeating sixes. So it's gonna be a little bit heavier than the object with a hole in it. So that's 10.6 repeating six kilogram. Now, what will be the mass of just the small piece? So that one we can say m2 over 10 is equal to the area of the small piece, pi times uh, 1 squared divided by pi times 4 squared minus pi times 1 squared. Same thing as here, right? Pi 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 cancel, m2 over 10 is equal to 1 divided by 15. So therefore, m2 is equal to 10 over 15. And that's equal to what? Two thirds, right? 0.6 bar kilogram. Okay, so now how do we do it? Well, we say that center of mass of the whole thing is x1, m1. We subtract x2, m2 over m1 minus m2. So basically, whatever we used to do before to find center of mass, we would usually add 
x1 m1 plus x2 m2 and then we would say m1 plus m2 this time we are subtracting the effect of the cavity from the hole right so we're subtracting both the numerator and the denominator what's x1 well x1 is 0 so that disappears minus x2 x2 is 2 meters right 2 meter m2 m2 is 0.6 repeating sixes, point six repeating, mass M1, <coughs> mass M1 is the total mass of the solid, which would have been 10.6 repeating sixes, 10.6 repeating sixes, minus M2, which would have been point six repeating sixes. So what is that going to give you? Well, uh, it's going to be Negative 1.3 repeating threes divided by 10.6 minus 0.6 repeating sixes, so that'll be 10, right? So what ended up happening, you actually end up getting the original mass because you're subtracting the mass of the total solid minus the mass of the cavity. So you actually end up getting the 10 kilograms that you started with, right? And then minus 1.3 over 10 meters. So where's that going to be? Well, it's barely going to be noticeable, right? So if this was uh, uh, one meter from here to here, it's not even a meter. So it's basically like about here. So the shift is a little bit to the left, right? Of course, if we make the cavity bigger, then we can see the effect of that, okay? What if we make the cavity the whole size? This whole size of the radius, what's going to happen? Well, you're gonna go through similarly, and then you're gonna have M1 minus M2 here. Well, here you will have two meters now, right? Two meter radius, and you will have 16 minus four, 12, which is going to be four thirds. So the mass of the solid will be what? Four thirds times 10, which is 40 over three. Forty over three. Now, how will M two change? And then here we have two squared, so it will be M two over ten is equal to four over four over. And then here will be two squared also. Sixteen minus four is twelve, so that's equal to one third. So M two will equal to ten third. Okay. So when we do the equation here, this will still cancel x2 will still be 2 meters because its center is at 2 and then m2 will be 10 third and then this one will be 40 thirds minus m2 will be 10 third well 40 thirds minus 10 thirds is 30 third which is 10. So it still comes out 10 here. And then this one comes out uh, minus 20 over three. Minus 20 over three divided by 10, which is what? Minus 20 over 30, cancels, cancels, minus 0. 0.6666. So basically, even if the cavity was the whole thing, that will not shift the center of mass that much. It will only make it 0. 0.66, so somewhere about here. So it's not even a full meter, okay? So the shift is pretty minimal. How, this, how will this change if, if instead of a circle, it was a sphere? A sphere with a spherical cavity, okay? What will change? Well, you'll go through the same steps, right? However, when you're doing the masses, since it's volume, you can't use the surface area. You have to use the volume, right? Let's see what will change. M1 over 10 is the volume of this. 4 thirds pi times 4 cubed over... Uh, let's go back to when the cavity was the small cavity. Okay? So what would be the volume of this thing? Well, it would be 4 thirds pi 4 cubed minus 4 thirds pi 
one cubed. Well, four times five, four times five, four times five cancel. Four cubed is 64 over 64 minus one, 64 over 63. So that means the cavity is not affecting the mass of the whole thing anyway. It's very, very minimal. So M1 will be 640 over 63, right? What will the mass of the small cavity be? M2 divided by the uh, 10 kilograms again, and that's going to equal 4 thirds pi 1 cubed over 4 thirds pi 4 cubed minus 4 thirds pi 1 cubed. Well, I don't have to put 4 thirds pi anymore. You see the pattern. So from now on, don't even put 4 thirds pi, 4 thirds pi. All that matters is you have to cube the radius. So forget this, forget this, forget this. You have M2 over 10 is equal to 1 over 64 minus 1, 63. So M2 is equal to 10 over 63. So the center of mass, X1, M1 minus X2, M2 over M1 minus M2. And then you have this one again is 0 minus X2 is again 2 meters. M2 is 10 over 63. M1 is equal to 640 over 63 minus 10 over 63. Well, notice what's always happening. When you do this, you have six, 630 over 63. It's going to be 10 kilograms. So this one is always going to be the mass of the, what you started with. So really, all you really needed is the mass of the cavity. The mass of the cavity times the center of mass of the cavity. Okay. So what do you have here? X is equal to minus 20 divided by 63 times 10, 630, okay? So, well, the zeros cancel. Negative 2 divided by 63, negative 0 0.0317 meters. So the center of mass does not shift in the volume case as much as with the uh, disk. The volume is affected less by the cavity, okay? So now you can see how the circle works as opposed to how a volume works and how to do these kind of cavity cases. Next, I'm going to show you how to find the moment of inertia of both of these kinds of things, okay? So this will be a chapter 9 problem, center of mass, and then the moment of inertia will be a chapter 10 problem, which is usually covered in Physics 1 in our chapter 10 book. Uh, which is on moment of inertias, okay? Thank you very much.